organizing, sort of organizing principles, um, solidarity, equity in all dimensions, democracy, workplace, government, etc., um, sustainability, and pluralism. Not a one size fits all. Model. Okay, and then we think about the solidarity economy sitting in uh, the, the globe, global world uh, ecosystem. And then um, we have uh, the government or governance, which not completely, but definitely frames what kind of an economic system you have. So then we have the, the solidarity economy with an overlap in, in, uh, with governance, and then we have these four spheres, four economic spheres. So we have production, we have um, distribution and exchange, Sorry about this. Um, we have consumption and we have finance. And um, so in the talk, um, I gave uh, some examples of what's in these spheres. Um, and then we have our arrows also sort of closing the loop where waste from production goes back into the ecosystem, but some of it also gets reused in production, and the waste from consumption gets used in production, some of it goes out into the ecosystem, etc. But I think um, when we get to the more participatory part, and when people are brainstorming about either what you're involved in, or what you know about, um, that's when we're sort of kind of populating these different spheres and hopefully build a, a picture of what's going on locally or could be going on locally where we're really building you know, uh, a sectoral approach, how to, how to make sure we're operating in many of these spheres, applying these multi-dimensional um, values um, and, uh, and connecting up as a system. And then also just to keep in mind right, that we're talking about uh, connecting up locally, right, building in different sectors, but also we need to be thinking about connecting up on a state, a regional, a national, as well as an international level. Um, so I don't know, I think that's probably about as much time as I have, um, so just to keep in mind that whole systemic thing. Okay. Hi everyone. Um, I'm going to pick up on where Emily left off and from this morning. I think I'm going to pick up a lot of where Tim uh, left off and what Daniel was talking about is like the co-optation and you know some it's not I think it's really important to think systemically because it's not easy to figure out how the pieces can or ought to fit together. And I'm going to draw just inspired by the circle stuff. But I'm going to draw a few things um, just to show. So I'm just going to say there's a community organizing sphere. There's a community e economic development sphere. Now just for shorthand, say there's a co-op sphere. And I'm going to tell just a brief story about some of the challenges and tensions that we've had in our work. Um, and I'm talking about the work I've been involved in with a base building community organizing group that got involved in the green jobs, green economy work. And some of you uh, know this well, have been uh, uh, drivers of something called the Green Justice Coalition, which started about four years ago, and brought together labor unions, uh, community groups, and environmental groups. And we were you know, going after the potential and promise that, that lots of people had I'm very excited about, which is, you know, how do we 
bump up the amount of energy savings that we're trying to achieve as a society at the same time that that helps generate the good jobs that people need and create access for uh, the families that most need uh, those kinds of savings. So, um, so the Green Justice was created out of that and became a statewide coalition. We've done, I think, a lot of good things. Um, I'm going to say that that was an attempt to, to stitch together at least these two things. Um, community organizing, community economic development. Um, I think we're challenged in this room to figure out how all these three, three things come together. We, we know that all three of these things exist. Um, I mean, I think all the great stuff that we saw about what's happening here in Worcester um, just really visibilized you know, this, this side of it, um, what ADP is doing out in Springfield. Um, you know, again, but there's a lot, there's some really significant divides. You know, and in the local work we do, there's, there's some very real barriers and challenges. And uh, in our work in Boston, we, and I came out of this tradition, and I just wanted to make a quick point here that in this side, there's been kind of a barrier here. Um, so on this side, we think of politics, right? We think of power as, you know, how much can you influence the political and policy process? You know, it's kind of thinking of ourselves as citizens, right? On this side, we're talking about the economy, or economics, and it's thinking about ourselves as producers. And so we were challenged to figure out how to put all this together. The coalition had some of these pieces, and in our own conversation, we ended up having a two-track process. So one was developing a coalition that could do the political work, that could help add the ump so that we get the kind of energy efficiency standards and goals that we want, and the policies in place so that we can get good job standards in play, um, and also creating the access for folks. The question then quickly arose, and we were, I, I want to acknowledge that we were very um, inspired and, and at that time had learned about what was happening with uh, co-op power out in the western part of the state and, and how community ownership became this kind of new idea. So if we're successful getting the policies, then how does, who owns and runs the, the, the economic work that needs to happen, right, to back that up? And so we, we felt like, wait, well, that's big, that's a, that's a really great question, because otherwise, if we didn't have any thoughts of our own about this side, then we're stuck here watchdogging. So, so we win a bunch of stuff, then we wait to see who comes in to do the work, and then we have to police them to figure out if they're hiring our people, if they're paying people well, if they're doing the work um, in, in, a, in a fashion that saves the energy, right? Um, so we started a second track, which was, is there a possibility for us to develop our own community-owned energy weatherization company? You know, we saw there's great examples of folks who've tried to do that. Um, I can just tell you, in our own experience, um, we went down a two-year path of planning and development. We, we actually got some funding to pay for a real feasibility study. We hired somebody as a, as a startup manager to really put together a business plan. Um, so we went pretty far, and it was three nonprofits that were actually trying to birth this project. It ended up being the idea was to create probably something like what ADP already tried to do through their uh, United for Hire. Build a company that could hire maybe about 12 people who were worker owners. Uh, the entire operation would kind of transition from initial nonprofit ownership to more of a hybrid structure where more of that ownership would be taken by uh, up to about 12 workers. So three kind of three crews and a, and a central staff. And they'd own, a, they'd own a couple trucks and some equipment, and they could go out and do all this work that now is being mandated um, through state policy. And we did the numbers well. You know, we, we actually, but we had to hire that. We had to contract that out, um, and we got stuck at the prop. You know, when it came down to figuring out who's going to really take the risk to put this thing out there, who's going to figure out how to raise the hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand dollars you need just to get going, right? That's where we've stalled. We have a good plan. I think it you know, can be pretty well said that uh, if, if we had the competent folks to get this thing going, got the startup financing, we could have a business that would break even. 
and, uh, and that would be a good thing. You know, and, and we had a lot of, and we were being driven because the groups that were around the table included the Boston Workers Alliance, where they had a lot of folks in their shop who had construction skills, who were looking to get into these industries. Same thing with the Chinese Progressive Association. You know, at ACE, we had board members who were out of work construction people. They were the ones who were saying, this is the kind of opportunity I would want. But um, just to sum up, uh, some of the challenges really came down to one, you know, we really did lack the business expertise. And it wasn't so much the, the, no, the technical knowledge, because we could get that. It was, it was about that we were not set up to do the kind of um, decision making it takes to run an enterprise. Right? To run an enterprise, you have to take risks of a different kind that most of our nonprofits that run on foundation or government funding or just don't ever take. We had to move quickly. We had to move decisions. You know, so if some kind of you know, program gets out there, you, we had to move on a time scale of perhaps months when we weren't going to be ready for another year. Um, so, so there was that tension. Um, there was a tension too. We had only envisioned one standalone co-op, co basically. At that time, we did not have a solidarity economy systems vision to this. We felt like, okay, great, we'll, we'll like spin this out, these workers will own it, they'll take it, they'll establish it, and great, but, you know, some of our people will have gotten a good um, job and wealth building opportunity. And that was kind of, that was the end all for us. We didn't think about, well, how does that really s relate back to um, a community economy and to uh, having that be really tethered to the social movement work that we were doing. Um, third, there's this big divide here. You know, so a lot of our groups don't have that kind of experience because we've seeded that space so that I would argue more conventional community economic development, which a lot of our you know, we have very well developed community development corporations, particularly in Boston and in Massachusetts overall. And, you know, and they've done a lot of great stuff. Um, but it's really premised, I would say, you know, this is not true of all CDCs, but I think the majority of the, that sector thinks about their work as trying to fill the market gaps. Right? So how do we get the market to work? How do we prime the pump of the market to work for communities that have essentially been left out? And, and to me, that's where you know, a lot of this stuff fills potentially that space. Isn't saying we're waiting for the bigger market to come in and do for our communities what it's done for others. We think that you know, there are probably systemic reasons why that hasn't happened and will not happen in a scaled up way. Um, and that's what got us into this space and thinking about all this stuff. And you know, I'm, I'm gonna stop there because I know a lot of folks here have a lot more experience on this track and thinking about how all this stuff fits together. But to me, a critical part of thinking about transition is how do we make the pieces we already have work together in a more synergistic way as opposed to feeling like we're in different worlds and sometimes even fighting with each other as opposed to figuring out where we can really make something bigger happen. Um, so I want to stop with, oh, I'm sorry, one last point, this is very important for, for base building organizations, is that you know, we don't quite have the leadership and leadership development tools or the uh, popular consciousness that I think we need of people having this in their heads or their own version of this. And, and that's a big part of the work that I think our groups are actually pretty good and we can do a lot of that. And you know, groups like ADP have really inspired us about you know, how you can build that over the years and be in a different conversation with your membership. Um, so that even if you're not gonna do all of these pieces, you can figure out where your piece can help support uh, the whole system.